My name is Ricky Houghton. I'm the director of robotic solutions at Ibis Tech. Some of the new innovations with your data link. Tell us about that, Ricky. Well, one of the things we wanted to focus on was what we call frequency flexibility. So a lot of radios today are tied to a very small number of bands. So maybe 10 channels or 11 channels. And what happens is when you get a lot of robots next to each other, they interfere and they can't operate. So if you go to some of the bigger trade shows, what you'll see is these robots won't operate at all. If they do operate, it's very jittery. So our radio operates from 4.8 gigahertz to 6.0 gigahertz. That covers military, public safety, ISM bands, and all the bands in between. So what that means is that you have 240 different channels. And if you're in theater or in operation and you get jammed at one place because there's a lot of hertz, you have you know, 240 other options available to you. So this ends up being really big to the military and to the testing. It also allows you to take an asset that you've developed for the military and test it or demo it legally because you can run it 5.8, whereas your other systems, if they're designed for military only, you can't bring them to a show legally and show them. So they either do it illegally or they uh, take out the radio and put in a new radio. Our idea is you just have one radio that works across the board. Tell us about the new data links that you have. So these two radios are what we call UGV tuned. They're They've been optimized from a, um, the need statement of a robot or an unmanned system. So traditionally people will take a standard radio that was optimized for video or for remote surveillance and plug it into a robot. The robotic needs or unmanned system needs are very different. And how you do the buffering and how the system performs, how it does connections and how it disconnects all become important. So we really wanted to focus on what does it mean to be UGV tuned as opposed to just being a general purpose radio. These two things will consume uh, considerably less power than most. In receive mode, it's about 4 watts. In transmit mode, it's between 10 and 14 watts, depending on how much data you're sending. There are smaller users of power than other systems. And what that means is today's platforms, where they're trying to conserve battery and get the most amount of life out of the battery, if your radio is consuming a lot of power, that's limiting your mission time. So by getting to a more efficient radio, we can extend the battery life. We don't have to replace the battery. You just replace the radio with something more efficient. So that was our other focus. How's the reaction been to your robotic work and your uh, link work? Some of the words were, you know, you've blown us away. Uh, most of the tests that we've done, we have outperformed everybody uh, across the board. The one place we don't do well is across water. Um, but in other tests, whether it's urban or line of sight or in foliage, uh, we are outperforming the competitors' radios uh, at a significant amount. And we're lighter and we have a better cost. So honestly, the, the reviews have been very good. But the radio is sort of like the engine in your car. Uh, it's not easy to just pick it up and replace it and put a new one in. So it's taken a while to get some traction. But the customers have been very impressed with the feature set and the performance and the price and the size. Ibis Tech has an interesting beginning. Tell us about that. Uh, Ibis Tech is run by two uh, brothers, Tom and John Buckner. So the, they've been entrepreneurs most of their life and have ventured into uh, various military products, being commercial, uh, uh, ballistic glass, as well as uh, up armor and situational lighting. So there's a various set of products, uh, including tow bars and bumpers um, and gunner protection kits. Here at the AUBSI, what are some of the things that have really blown you away? I'm mostly impressed by the UAVs. I didn't realize how much innovation was still happening there. It seemed like the government had picked a few platforms and were just going to start buying them. And it seems like people haven't slowed down the innovation. And honestly, from the UGV side, people feel like that's the near area where innovation's going to happen. And you show up a show like this and you realize the innovation's still in the UAV. There really isn't as much ground advancement or innovation happening right now as I expected. So I, I think that leaves a lot of room for more innovation from us.